نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. It's quite a heavy topic that I have to speak on. As many who have clicked on this video or this podcast episode, whatever platform you're using, may know my dear teacher and mentor Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif passed this past eve of Jumu'ah, eve of Friday, and it's been a roller coaster of emotions just trying to process it. And some of you may be wondering why this is appearing on the Scholar and the Student podcast or the Scholar and the Student classes. You know, the fact of the matter is that there would be no Scholar and the Student podcast or anything that I'm doing if it wasn't for the direct intervention of Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif. Of course, we attribute it to Allah, but I genuinely believe that Allah chose Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif to be an instrumental part of my journey. You know, it's really difficult to speak about because the reality is sort of dawned on me now. But it's an inevitable reality of life, I suppose. I can clearly divide my life into the time before I had taken Sheikh Muhammad's classes and the time after. Because if you look at the trajectory, then there's a clear difference. I wouldn't be half the man I was today if it wasn't for everything I've learned with Sheikh. And he was never imposing. I didn't learn much fit from him. But spirituality, his character, that's definitely rubbed off. And it's amazing that in terms of fit, you know, I follow the Maliki Maghab. I think that much is trite. And obviously there would be many differences of opinion, but Sheikh really laid the groundwork of separating Islam from culture and many toxic patterns that I was involved in myself once upon a time. So I really owe him a lot. When we come to his courses, Visionaire, Dreamwalker, and even I was part of his book club, Book Hero. And that itself is so monumental. You know, being That introduced me to Audible, Howl's Moving Castle. That, was, that series was my first book review on The Scholar and the Student. And all the self-help books, all the times I published uh, the best books I've read this year, all of that was because of me reading those books with Sheikh Muhammad Al-Sharif. And of course, I've got a different approach to that. I'm in a different book club now. But, you know, just that small example shows how much of an impact he still has on me. And... Whenever I talk, I was recently at a wedding and I talked about dreaming and going and catching that crazy, insane dream because it's not crazy and insane in the eyes of Allah. But definitely go and make it happen. That too is basically me taking his words and making them my own. So whenever you hear me in particular talking about dreams and visions, you can directly link it back to Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. Me starting a podcast was just a crazy dream once upon a time, but making dua to Allah and He showed me how to nurture that connection really took it to the next level. I, I was going to make a post about thanking people for 100 subscribers on the Scholar and the Student podcast and the classes channel, which I started literally this year, that's caught up in such a short amount of time. And, you know, one of my videos on... I've, past thousand views on one of my videos on the Scholar and the Student podcast and one of my other videos on the classes channel, the How to Pray, Eat Salah and the Maliki Fit. That was also very quickly approaching a thousand views. So I wanted to make a, a thank you post for everyone. But yes, I definitely do have thanks for them. But I think now the way things have transpired, I, I owe a huge deal of thanks to Sheikh Muhammad Al-Sharif. Because yeah, hundred subscribers is not a lot a thousand views is just the beginning of the story but the fact that he propelled me to starting that story Allahu Akbar. I don't know if I'm even making sense right now and I don't want to draw this out more than it has to be but he's going to leave a huge void to be filled 
But I guess all this begs the question of what we're going to do now. You know, when I first heard the news, for a brief moment, I felt something similar to when our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu passed away, which is what, you know, some people felt that, what are we going to do now? We followed Islam during his lifetime. Is this the end of Islam? I felt, you know, all the amazing lessons, visionary, dream walker. Does that all end now that Sheikh Muhammad is gone? But no, even at that time when our beloved Prophet ﷺ passed on, we were reminded through others, obviously, that yes, he may have passed on, alayhi salatu wasalam, but Allah is ever living. Islam still exists. So I basically say the same thing. Sheikh Muhammad was definitely an integral part in the story, but the story hasn't ended. His parents raised him on the motto, nothing is impossible, and he lived that. He memorized the Quran, he studied Islam in Medina, and started off Al-Maghrib, and the premise of Al-Maghrib is simple to grasp in today's day and age. You have to understand he began it in a time when teleconferencing was literally a myth. And he just had this crazy idea that he's going to start Islamic classes for adults, like after Maghrib, that's why it's called Al-Maghrib. But that crazy idea became a reality and a stepping stone for many people to actually take Islamic studies seriously and go on to pursue even further studies. So what do we do now that the nation builder himself has gone to meet his Lord? I say the time is right for us to become nation builders ourselves. The fact that his passing Ali, has affected so many people directly, myself in Botswana. He was always so happy to see my name whenever I enrolled for one of his courses, well, notwithstanding the fact that, or perhaps due to the fact that I was his only student from Botswana, and I really wanted to change that. There were people I really wanted to bring on board to Visionaire. It shows you how, if you really want to do something, just go ahead and do it, don't, don't wait. But yeah, he was always happy. And one thing that you'll get from a lot of people who are speaking of him is that he made you feel like you were his best friend, uh, that element of exclusivity. Although that wasn't the case, so many people were in his inner circle, so to speak. There are so many things I could say about Sheikh Muhammad, but I think the best thing we can do is, yeah, take time to grieve, definitely. Process these emotions, but everything that he's taught us, Let's put it to good use. And when we finally meet him in Jannah, let's have that great visionary party that we always talked about and show him not just the manifestation of the dream du'as, but the dream visions that we set forward for. Not just the upcoming decade, but decades and decades to come, generations to come. Imagine how much he has had an impact on this world that it's truly beyond him that even now people whom he had never had the pleasure of meeting even virtually even they are going to carry on his legacy as I know I'm definitely raising my kids be it Nilla, whenever they arrive upon the vision airway and upon that same motto that nothing is impossible so just like Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif always used to sign off I'll leave you with the words wishing you to succeed on every level. Assalamu alaikum.